Bravo, Miss Haywood. Welcome back to the Sandy Trail. We are in the fifth part of episode four review. After this video, there will be one more part to wrap up episode four of season two. If you made it this far, I appreciate you and your time. Thank you for your patience and um, listening out and uh, hearing me rant about this episode. As usual, any comment. Uh, drop them below or you can tweet me. I am on Twitter if you don't have a YouTube account. Um, this episode is just jam-packed and I really didn't want to rush over it. And I'd rather talk about, take the time to talk about the big and little details in episode 4. We start off with that scene. They're playing that game and Charlotte... I thought she was a bit shy um, in a good way when Hunter Lennox... Uh, complimented her, um, and while that, Alexander, uh, looked over, and he was like, okay, like, you know, and like, kind of like that annoyed look, like, why am I even here? <laughs> Good shot, Miss Lamb, wasn't it, Charles? I dare not disagree, given that Miss Lamb is holding a mallet. <laughs> Charles tells me that your sitting was less than successful. Do you see the first change in Georgiana's facial expression? Um, <laughs> she loved to compliment from Arthur, but then Laka intervened. Well, he was already part of the group conversation. He started off with that joke about Georgiana holding a mallet. Uh, but then Arthur revealed that Laka told Arthur about what happened at the drawing session between Laka and Georgiana. I get that normal boys talk, you know, man-to-man -man chat, but if I were Georgiana, I think I would have been, like, a little bit annoyed. Um, kind of, like, half annoyed and half embarrassed because I think this is something that Georgiana doesn't want to talk about. To put it mildly. The fact is, Arthur, you are entirely yourself at all times. That's such a rare and glorious thing. Georgiana was disappointed uh, with the session that she had with Laka. She really didn't want to talk about it in this scene. I'm pretty upset about it. I know exactly who I am, Mr. Lockhart. I hardly need you to tell me. I do want to say, though, like, season two, Arthur is, like, monkey in the middle between Laka and Georgiana. Uh, at the same time, he's like the mediator for these two and try to help them navigate through the complicated relationship. Uh, we'll see what happened in season three, but I was just wondering, you know, like what if Arthur does end up with feelings for Georgiana? You know, that would change the ball game in a whole new complete way. Uh, but for now, Arthur just being a good friend to both like I and Georgiana, um, it seemed that he is rooting for them and tried to make it peaceful uh, between Georgiana and Laka. Uh, Georgiana is a complicated woman, uh, not in a bad way. She's just um, very protective of herself, and Laka needs to understand that. I think he needs to uh, come forward to her, uh, approach her in a gentle and respectful manner. Um, he a very outgoing, he just has a very bold personality that I think is contradicting to her personality. Take your hands off! He's trying to help! Augusta! 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 Augusta is fine, but what a story to tell her future kids though, like, oh yeah, I went to this event for time in society and I fainted. Um, anyway, uh, Lennox, I think he really cared for her in that moment, like he really tried to help her, like nothing else. But I understand why Mr. Holborn commanded him not to touch his knees, uh, just because of the complicated past. Uh, you, can, you can feel it in his tone against Lennox. As a gentleman who finds you pretty, you must have noticed. Colonel Lennox? 
It's really nice for Ajaxa to have a new female figure in her life after losing her mom and her aunt Lucy. Uh, it's nice of Charlotte helping Ajaxa in this scene. Um, then Ajaxa said that and you can tell that she is at that age where she understand more and more about love in general and when you like a person. At first though, I think Charlotte thought of Mr. Holborn. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised because Augusta is telling her this and she's like, um, are you talking about your uncle? And you can see Charlotte like get a little bit shy. Yet, I cannot tell if you welcome his attention. I think she was relieved a bit when Augusta mentioned Lennox because if she mentioned her uncle, I think this conversation would have been uh, a little bit more awkward than it already is. Um, yeah, Charlotte's not going to say anything to her. Um, she doesn't want to say something to Augusta and possibly Augusta forward the information to Mr. Holborn, right? Uh, so Charlotte basically keeping her feeling her secret to herself. Um, but I guess it made a good point. Like, you know, she's not sure if Charlotte likes Lennox. And I think um, that story that Lennox told Charlotte about Mr. Holborn plays a role in that. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it could be that Charlotte likes Mr. Holborn instead of Lennox, you know. Um, so maybe that's why Charlotte is not very welcoming uh, to his attention, but Augusta doesn't know that yet. When will we hear the end of it? <laughs> when every last slave is freed, my lady. I know you believe me a hypocrite, because I am a beneficiary of the very trade I seek to boycott. The event became political, I'm just gonna say, as it is. Uh, season 2, um, there's a sugar boat hot going on and Georgiana supports that, but not Lady Denham. Lady Denham basically like shutting the door on Georgiana. Uh, she really doesn't hear. Um, she is that type of woman that um, tends to hear about herself um, most of the time. And she complained like, okay, no one's gonna eat my cake. Like, I invited you guys. You're not gonna eat the cake because it's full of sugar. Uh, you guys gonna disrespect me as the holders of the party. But I cannot change the past. All I can do is speak for those who cannot. The fact is, anyone who buys sugar perpetuates this evil trade. You have the freedom to eat the cake or not, right? And Georgiana stepped forward and she, um, confronted Lady Denham why she's not gonna eat the cake and um, she has every right to you know eat the cake or not. Um, it's, it's really tough though because some people don't want to try to understand each other different um, belief and um, doesn't want to respect other people's belief uh, regardless if those beliefs are the same as yours or not. Uh, so Georgiana is um, fighting for her brothers and sisters in slavery. So, if you are not troubled by the thought of men and women toiling all day to harvest your sugar, then by all means, enjoy your cake. But I must decline. This is a really big moment. I truly believe this is like the turning point for Georgiana. She finally stepped out of her shell. Um, early at the party, she mentioned to Charlotte, like, you know, this is why she's struggling Sanderton. Like, she has money, but she is a hollow woman, and she just didn't have the courage to step out in, in boldness and uh, just say what she believed in. And she did, finally, in this scene. Uh, it's, there seemed to be a lot of agreement within the crowd listening to Georgiana speak. Um, you know, no one is standing up except for her. And she finally said it to Lady Denham. Uh, Lady Denham, she can do whatever she wants to do, right? Like, buy the cake or not buy the cake. Uh, Georgiana can do whatever she wants to do. Um, she can believe in whatever she wants to believe in. I think the issue with Lady Denham for Georgiana is that Lady Denham is not 
trying to listen uh, or understand why um, Georgiana doesn't support the sugar trade, uh, why she boycotting it. Um, you know, everyone has their own decision choice whether to eat the cake or not. Uh, but I think it's just the way that Lady Denim um, um, react to the boycott. It's like, you know, oh, this is like, you know, a piece of crap, like, why are you guys doing this? Like, you're making it a big deal. And I think her attitudes uh, toward the boycott um, disappointed Georgiana. <laughs> This is the moment the author had been waiting for from Georgiana. He was super proud as a friend. Um, good for Georgiana. She basically wanted to unleash herself from the expectation standards in society. She wanted to let go of herself from the holes uh, from society and just be herself and voice her concern on important matters. Uh, like this one, the sugar boycott. Uh, she did say though, like if you want to eat the cake, like go right ahead. Like I don't care, but she's not gonna be uh pushed around anymore to do things that she doesn't want to do. This moment, Lady Denim, I think uh, she, I think she did expect Georgiana to do this, but I know this moment gonna um piss her off. Sorry for my language, but uh, it is what it is. <laughs> and uh, it, it's just like one of those breaking uh, news moments for Georgiana. And good for her. She finally took a stand uh, for herself and for her people. She is the very image of her aunt. When she was in my arms, it was as if Lucy had come back to me. Lennox, um, you know, at first he seemed cool, right? I think for all of us, we, some of us have different scenes or moments in, in season two where we think, oh, hey, maybe Lennox is not a good guy. This is one of the scenes, and what he said to Alexander Holborn, uh, basically he was, like, comparing Augusta to Lucy. And what Lennox told him in the scene, um, that wasn't cool, um, inappropriate and you can tell that it stirred up uh alexander bitterness um anger toward lennox <laughs> fraser like yeah i'm not gonna watch the postposal um moment between harder and allison i don't blame him but from that look on the face he was expecting to officially lose his chance to be with Allison right there and then. My dear Allison, there is a question I am burning to ask you. Indeed, the rest of my life may depend upon your answer. And ask it. This is not a surprise <laughs> proposal. Um, Allison, like, was already expecting that. The question, the topic that he needed to talk to her about was uh, him asking the ultimate question if she gonna marry him. Uh, she looked very happy, very excited for him to ask that official question. This is the moment. Would you do me the honor of becoming my wife? William. The first time perspective, like if you pay close attention to harder uh, body movements and his facial expression, at first you would think like, oh hey, maybe he doesn't want to get wet or fall into the water, uh, stay on balance uh, within uh, the boat. The answer is yes! <laughs> Allison! Allison! Take the oath! Take the oath! But then when uh, this incident happened, then you're like, oh, that's why. Not only he didn't want to fall over into the water, it's because he cannot swim. He literally left Allison in the water. Um, 
he didn't even like try to jump in and save her. Uh, he, well, he didn't want to lose his life, but uh, the efforts are not what Allison was expecting. Like she expected more. She expected him to uh, follow her, chase after her, and get her rescue instead of here the or <laughs> like you know like like halfway you on your own. Uh, so this will not look good on Carter. Um, if Allison drowns, <laughs> like, this, is, this will be, like, a huge drama in the town of Sanderson, and, um, Allison's parents will be very sad, heartbroken, and very mad, um, that Carter didn't save her if she did drown in this scene. There is the passion that I've been looking for. How I should love to capture your expression in this very moment. It sparked something inside of Arthur, like, you know, to hit the Georgiana that he um dying to see and to witness and to get to know. Uh he knows that there are barriers around her. She has her walls up. Um she's just not free, um, to be herself. And Georgiana did that uh, to Lady Denham um, about the sugar trade. And uh, that's like a spotlight moment for Georgiana. But more than that, it showed Arthur the true Georgiana. And I think he fell for her in that moment. Um, his interest in her uh, got deeper and he really wanted to stay with her. Like, still continue to be her friend and possibly... Um, have this serious relationship with her as boyfriend and girlfriend. I assume you have a pencil, paper. Always. Round two is happening. The way Georgiana said yes to it, it just shows that um, not only is she giving him a second chance to draw her, she trusts him. Uh, she appreciates the friendship with him. Um, basically, she forgiving him in the sense and allowing him to draw her again. So this is a good sign for Lockhart. Very well then. But not here. I don't want an audience. I think this is something that Georgiana didn't expect. Like, she didn't expect to meet a man like Lockhart. He has a different personality than Otis. Uh, he brought something to Georgiana that Otis didn't. And I think that intrigued her. And I think that encouraged her to open up about herself and uh, just be confident in herself and um, in her life and what she believes in. And I think she liked that. And I think she appreciates that. And I think she finally accepting that from Laka. That what he offers her in the friendship. Like, what he going to offer her in their dating relationship and marriage relationship, right? Usually when you get to know a person uh, in the friendship or early dating stage, um, that uh, a glimpse, a taste of what to come if you do want to go far in life with that partner. If you paid attention closely, Arthur was talking to Mary, Miss Hankin, and Mr. Hankin. Uh, so that nod from Arthur, not only did he, um, you know, accept the idea of Lotka and Georgiana to be alone together and, you know, do their thing, but it's also a nod like, you know, I got your back, like, you go, you guys do your thing, I, uh, supporting you guys 100%, and maybe, uh, my guess is that it's a nod that he will try to keep um, Mary, Miss Hankins, and Mr. Hankins, like, occupy in this conversation that Arthur is already having with them, uh, just to keep them away from Georgiana and Laka. Because back in those days, usually an adult chaperone will be um, with uh, 
uh, helpful, but Georgiana, you know, doesn't want any adults, any guardians around. She wanted to have that private moment with Lockhart. Oh, why was it you? Why did William not try to save me? Come on, seriously, like, Hada is still in the boat, um, away from the shore. I mean, he really doesn't know how to row a boat. Unbelievable. I, I wouldn't blame Allison. Um, her first reaction, like, you know, why did, uh, Fraser rescue me, not my boyfriend, Hada? Uh, so, you know, a lot of thought going through her head, but I don't blame her. Uh, she's really mad about this situation right now. It's Colvin. Do you consider some sport? Will you take up the bow against me? No. Thank you. It sucks. I mean, I'm pretty sure that Mr. Holborn wanted to move past this and he really didn't want to see Lennox again ever in his life. He never thought in a million years that Lennox would settle down in Senaton for some time with his men. Oh, that's rather ungracious of you, Mr. Coburn. Are you afraid the colonel might show you up? Lady Denham, always with the fiery words coming out from her mouth, uh, she thought like, hey, why not bring the love triangle into the archery competition, right? Because usually whichever guy wins the game, usually it will impress the leading lady. Mr. Corbin really didn't want to, but his dad was really good in archery, so maybe, um, Alexander Holborn inherited that that gene, that talent from his dad. Well, we'll find out um, if he does really well. I think one of the reasons why he agreed to this game with Lennox uh, is to prove Lennox wrong and also to prove that he is the better man in this situation and maybe the better man for Charlotte. Oh! Oh! Fine start, Colonel. Oh, Mr. Coburn, you'll be lucky to match it. Well, Charlie, um, she didn't seem too excited, too happy for Lennox. So I think that speaks something about how she is feeling about this situation. Uh, to me, it looks like she might be on Mr. Coburn's side. And I think she, she feels for him. Like, she's like... I hope Mr. Holborn, you know, does really well in the game. I think she didn't want any further embarrassment for Mr. Holborn, especially after what happened in the past with his wife and how he quietly walked away from the life of society. Uh, yeah, she didn't really look too happy that Lennox got a, a good shot and you can see Mr. Holborn uh, getting a little bit nervous for his turn. Oh, I spoke too soon. This will be a fight to the death. To see the reaction on Charlotte's face, I was just like, that looks like um, much more happier than her reaction to Lennox's shot. She actually smiled and uh, clapped her hands. Um, it was just like um, a bit of like a double smile, like she didn't want to like be overjoyed, um, just like happy enough for Mr. Holborn uh, over that good shot that he took. And I think that's a big high volume of how she is feeling about this love triangle dynamic. Uh, to me, it's like she's siding with Mr. Holborn a little bit more than she is with Lennox. Kind of like um, maybe like a 70% Mr. Holborn side and 30% uh, Lennox side. Um, I think she's just waiting to hear from Mr. Holborn's side of the story. Like she cannot come to that um, conclusion just yet until she hear it from Mr. Holborn. And then after that, you know, she has to decide who she will believe, trust in, um, Alexander or uh, Colonel Lennox. So uh, that would be a big question for her. Forgive me, Aunt. I couldn't wait a moment longer to share my good news with you both. 
Clara's agreed to do me the great honor of becoming my wife. Lady Denham is very shocked <laughs> to to hear what Edward had to say, and a lot of thoughts are rushing to Lady Denham's mind. Had you know the baby that's number one, number two, like the two worst people on the planet, Edward and Clara, marrying each other. I mean, that's just like crazy. The way that Edward was happy with the reaction from Esther, it just shows how evil he is. He is willing to destroy her, attack her, make her miserable and unhappy in her life and in her marriage with Lord Babington. Keep in mind, he had all the letters that Lord Babington sent to Esther just to make her think that her husband abandoned her, which he didn't. Uh, so wicked, so evil. Lady Denham, this would be a very complicated situation for her. She is not stupid. So she would start thinking like, okay, you want to marry Clara, you really don't love her. I mean, you denied the baby as your own the first time, and now you're claiming the baby as yours, and you want to marry the mother of the child, just so uh, your baby boy will get the name, and the family name, and eventually the money that comes with that name. Um, I don't think Lady Denham will fall for this plan that Edward set in motion with Clara over their engagement and becoming a little family. Uh, we'll see what happened, but I don't blame Esther. Uh, she put up with so much crap with Edward in season one and now in season two and now this.